you, thank you, Natasha. Thank you all for being here. Um, yeah, I would like to thank Natasha and Wade for co-organizing this uh, this uh, session. And um, so today I'm here on behalf of the of our team in uh, in Montrepo. And uh, my talk today is a little bit to 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 explain you and to to take you uh, over the research agenda of this project that we start two years uh, two years ago in uh, in Montrepo in this laboratory for traceology and control experiments. So it was a quite interesting. Uh, was interesting for me as a user person when, when I took this uh, this job and this this project, which kind of forced me a little bit to look at traceology in an upper level. And so today I was I want to to I organize my talk in two main topics. So first of all, I want to take you over the challenges that we faced and we're still facing in the lab. And the main research questions are: we want to tackle those issues, we know, are we want to address those research questions. And the second part of the talk will. Uh, be, uh, I will try to show uh, our initial results and also some ongoing uh, projects uh, in, the, in the laboratory at the moment. So, I mean, we all know, it, just to contextualize us, so we all know that uh, user analysis is a fundamental tool when we try to, uh, or a fundamental method when we try to infer on uh, human behavior. So, user basically is dedicated to trying to understand human behavior through the analysis of uh, human technologies. Uh, from the past, so useware basically means that we're trying to assess tool function and, and from there just uh, try to reconstruct human behavior and see how this uh, behavior change through time and in different in different spaces. So we all know or we're familiar with the work developed by Semenov in the in the early uh, 60s, which is kind of a, a starting point for for the useware uh, methods. Uh, since the early 60s, a lot has uh, been done on newsware, as, as, as you know, and uh, despite the, the very promising uh, state of the art nowadays, um, there are a few, few issues or few uh, limitations, let us call it like this, that have been pointed out to, 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 to sociology. I would, uh, we would summarize them here, as you see, as a, a lack of a quantitative approach on, on newsware. So lack of standardization, which is all, all in the repeatability and reproducibility, which I'll address in a minute when I'm talking, for example, about experiments. And what concerns experiments, uh, people have been saying that experiments include too many factors at once. That means when you're testing many, many variables at the same time, uh, it's a bit tricky to try to understand how they affect the final results and which fact, uh, variables affect the final results. I'll also uh, talk a little bit uh, about this in detail in the in a few minutes, and also the issue related to raw materials. So we all know that most of the reference collections that are used as a proxy to interpret the, the archaeological record and to interpret also the, the user, the different types of user traces, they rely on reference collection made on flint. So that's a limitation when we try to 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 analyze other raw materials such as quartzite or obsidian or basalt, which we know are significantly differently, and we also came across of this recent idea, which has been explored by some researchers recently, that useware has been used to inform on stone tools, uh, but there's a lack of, of knowledge about the tool utility. I would call it tool utility for the sake of a better word. Uh, and by tool utility, I mean, it, I mean suitability of a tool to, to perform a, a given task, uh, the efficiency of the tool, and also the durability of that, of that tool. So when we were, uh, asked to start the pro this project and we were basically asked to come up with new ideas and try to tackle these, these issues that were present in the, in the field. We came up with, uh, with, with uh, some, 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 some main uh, research avenues in our, in our research agenda. So our main goal, our main scope is basically to build a model to use our uh, formation in different types of, of raw materials, but also to come up with uh, some methodological developments. And what concerned the methodological developments, we mainly focus on control experiments, quantitative approach on useware analysis, which is basically, which basically aims to produce objective, quantitative and interpretation free data. We can discuss a little bit about this, but also the main goal is people not useware uh, person or as non-useware non uh, specialists specialist would say, which the idea is to transform useware analysis into natural sciences. So that, that's also accepted in the archaeological community. Maybe here 90% of you work on useware, but I'm pretty sure all of you were already asked 
about these all these limitations and now we can rely on use on user data so we basically were driven by these main questions how we can show how we can uh, uh, show others that use where is a very reliable uh, discipline and of course i mean as a big part of our uh, or as a as a big aim in our uh, research questions we want to use this data and this this approach to infer on Pleistocene and early Holocene uh, archaeology. So the main research workflow in our in our lab is is basically includes three main steps. So one is the material properties. So we try to address the material properties, try to investigate or even characterize the different raw materials. I'll mention that in a second as well. Also includes variable control. So it's which is a main uh, topic in our experiments, and then use work quantification. And it's, it's, it's a workflow that doesn't go in only in one direction, but it's a, a circular argument, okay? So that means that sometimes we address raw material properties, we go to the experiments, and we do the use work quantification, and, and the data that we're getting from the use work quantification is basically driving us to come back to the initial uh, point. So why should we measure material properties? So as I just said, I mean, when you look at archaeological record, we all know, and uh, we don't need to do use where we just need to nap some tools, we know that different materials, if they have different properties. So, I mean, if those properties are, 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 have, are, are major, uh, have, have major impact on the way we nap those, those, those stone tools, so certainly they have major impact on the formation of user. So, in other words, we shouldn't expect to find the same type of user in different raw materials. So, but we still don't know clearly uh, how, how user were forms in these different raw materials. So, in, uh, in a way, it's fundamental to include the, the properties in, the, in our experiments and measure the properties in order to see how these affect the, the use wear formation. But also the work material. So different stage, for example, not only different work materials. So, I mean, uh, you can say that antler is harder than, than butchering meat, for example, or, or hide working, but also the stage of one of these uh, different uh, work materials, it's also important. And this, they should also be considered when we're doing our, our experiments. So at the moment, I mean, raw materials proper, properties, as you might know, I'm pretty sure you know, and we can discuss about it, is, this is a very tricky topic. So if, when, if you want to talk about RNS, which I'll address in a minute, it's very, very complicated and involves many uh, different experts. We try, we try to start with the bigger uh, approach and then go into more detail. So, for example, just including things such as density. You know, sometimes you're dealing with flint. Even within flint, we have a huge variability. So, trying to include some measurements on density might help us also to see if different types of flint uh, result in different types of, of user. Also, some composition of these uh, raw materials. Here's some examples of some techniques that we do, that we're involving in our uh, material properties measurement but also surface roughness. So, I mean, use wear, especially when you talk about quantification, is measuring surface roughness. So, if we're running experiments on materials or in raw materials or rocks that have different surface roughness to begin with, it's important to measure the original surface. And for that, I mean, we can use the confocal microscopy and there are different techniques that can be used. And for example, I mentioned the hardness. So, we use at, at our lab, we have access to a Libri bound RNS, so we try to include RNS in our, when measuring the materials that we, that we use in our stone tools, but also the materials that we are working. As I said in the beginning, another important topic is archaeological experiment. So we all know that use where rely heavily on experiments. I mean, our reference collections are based on experiments. So, I mean, our argument goes in a way that our interpretations are based on experiments. So we have to make sure that our experiments are valid in the first place they can, they are, and, and everyone can, can, uh, can, can run the same experiment and try to get the same, the same answer. This is a bit tricky because when, I try, when we try to introduce this topic, uh, especially because we, in our lab we mainly focus on this so-called second generation experiments and control experiments, people always say that we're trying to neglect the, 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 the basic experiments. Quite the opposite. Let me just go uh, back. The way we see it, we try to organize experiments in different levels. Different levels here should be seen as they are less important than the others. No, they just address different topics. So we were recently working in a paper that, and we're suggesting that we can organize our experiments in three different levels. 
So the first generation experiments is basically actualistic and pilot experiments, which is the main goal is to identify the factors. It's, it's for example, is to test the suitability of a tool to perform a, a given task. Okay, and we want to understand how, how, how the activity works and want to understand what variables seem to have effect in the final results. And then we pick up those variables and we test what we call the second experiment. Oh, already, okay. So this is one of the experimental setups that we use in our lab for the, for the, control, for the control experiments, which allow us to, to control record and uh, decide on many, uh, many different uh, variables. Another important aspect that we're considering is combining scales. So we know that use where appears in different scales. So it's important when you do analyze that, that we combine different scales, not just look at the use where itself in the polish, but also consider the morphology and the edge damage and so on and so on. And also quantification. So this is a technique and a method that has been established for many years in dental micro, just a question of borrow the method to our, to our field which is, allows us to, 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 to address and to measure and to quantify many different aspects. Uh, I guess I was not able to finish that, that slide last night. So let me just take you very quickly for, to some of our recent, our initial case studies. Since we're very keen on quantification, and uh, quantification is, is important, but it's also important to establish how we quantify. You know, I mean, we can't quantify, but if you quantify in different, many different ways, when you try to compare, I mean, things get tricky. So I recently just came up with the idea of trying to measure how the different uh, settings and the different characteristics of the, of the objectives that we're using for, for uh, user studies and for quantification, what's the, how they affect the final results. And it's quite clear that they affect. So although it's important that we don't I mean, I know, that, I know, we know that not all, not all of us have access to the same equipment. It's important that we report all settings when we're doing quantification so that at the end data can be compared. Another important step is also what we call the sequential experiments. So we come up with this idea of having coordinate systems so that we can scan exactly the same exact spot after the experiment. So that's, that's very reproducible and we can not working with averages, but also actually, but actually measuring the same exact spot over the experiment. So that allows us allow us to see how the use where it's formed through, through the experiments. Uh, the, the, the result basically, it's, uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's initial, so we want, we'd like to improve this, but <coughs> nevertheless, uh, although it's only 14% uh, uh, of uh, repeatability in the field of view, the software now, now is looking at the features on those field of view and combine the, the images and allows us to process the data. Here are also some ongoing experiments. I mean, one of them here on the right, on your right, yeah, exactly. Uh, it's one of the posters that Antonella is presenting here. And these two case studies here clearly illustrate the idea that we want to combine different scales in our use where uh, analysis, which also includes address topics such as edge angle, such as edge durability, such as efficiency of the, of, of the tool. Um, so for example, here on the left, we're addressing uh, one of the PhD's, PhD students is working on uh, bifacial uh, stone tools for the middle politic, so which are meant to be standardized, and we want to test how, how, how the different edge angles uh, uh, influence the final results of the, 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 the way uh, the, work, the work material is, is processed. And here, on the right side, the poster you can check on Antonella's project, that, the poster, the idea is that we're testing two different raw materials, so in this case, flint and obsidian, and we're trying to reproduce the same action, the same movement, and try to see which edge uh, lasts longer. So in trying to uh, relate that with the properties of each of these, of these uh, raw materials. And thank you for your attention.